Good after 7 o'clock p.m. on the 8th of September. This is a regular meeting of the Richfield Board of Education. Uh, in attendance this evening are Todd Nolenberger, Christine Malik, John Ashmead, Deb Etchen, Tim Paulus, Superintendent Stevenowski, and I'm Peter Tensing. Uh, we will begin with a review of the agenda. Uh, would ask for uh, any questions and or a motion. Mr. Chair, not seeing any changes, I'll move the agenda. A second. So motion by Nolenberger, second by Malik. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye, the agenda is approved. So we will go ahead and move on to item 3A. We have no delegations to receive. And then 3B is uh, reports and information from school sources, starting with the superintendent update. Mr. Janowski. Thank you, sir. Very exciting time of year. Obviously, last week, Wednesday, was our first day of school. We actually just finished our fourth day. Um, it was a highly successful first week um, with that experimental several days before Labor Day. Um, it was an excellent opportunity for our staff to transition our students in and really begin things on the right foot. Um, mm -hmm. want to highlight a few things. Um, we obviously started with a brand new high school principal. She's actually already met with all of the grades, talking to students about our high school expectations and working together to ensure that Richfield High School is that banner school to lead Spartan pride across the city of Richfield. Um, I want to highlight RDLS, our dual language school, where we had a pretty significant uh, transition of our staff. <coughs> um, we had a very smooth opening at RDLS. Um, parents are commenting broadly about the extremely strong climate at RDLS, and we have had very strong structures put in through a team collaboration of the principal and our new staff and our returning staff. So we're very proud of the work going on at RDLS. Another highlight would have to be our transportation system. Um, one of the exciting parts of the first weeks of school is getting students to school effectively and getting them home on time. Um, so we are very proud to share that our bus system um, was working highly effectively during that first week, getting students home within um, less than an hour and most often, almost every time, under a half an hour late on that first day of school and have gotten most of our routes to actually being already on time within four days of the start of school. And then finally, our technology infrastructure project, where the major work has been completed over the summer, um, but we are obviously still working on glitches. And as a person who, a few months back, bought a computer for my home, and I'm still working on making sure that it always logs into my network and is able to print effectively, we're noting that we're working out each of the kinks. Some of the not so amusing kinks are finding out that our air conditioning system is connected to the wireless network. Um, and so that has been in and out at times, so we're looking forward to that break in the weather, but we are working diligently to make sure that each of those technology pieces are completely online to finish up that positive technology infrastructure work. Questions about the first day? I will note that my eighth grader uh, realized right away that he had three days the first week, four days the second, and five the third and he uh, really appreciates you easing him back into the school year. <laughs> smart kid. He is a smart kid. There must be some mathematics in that family. Well, we can count to five. <laughs> yes. Well, and our calendar committee, which we'll be looking at next year, will obviously get some feedback on how that beginning worked out. Uh, Labor Day this year is the latest it could possibly start. There's actually, um, I believe state statute was passed to allow a school start beginning September 1st. Um, that would actually only be two days of next year. So a conversation that our calendar committee will have, but not a conversation we've had at all at this point. We really want to review that transition, review how our calendar has worked, and, and figure out the most consistent and effective start to our school. Other questions on the first day of school, or we can move on to... What, what are, are we going to get into numbers later? Um, so we are a little bit early for the class size conversation. Okay. Um, we are working diligently to make sure that we are coming at or near our targets. Um, we're still clearing students off our rolls who are not showing up. We're actually registering students. It's a typical addition of approximately 100 new students during the first week of school, which is typically after Labor Day. So we're going to see some additions. Um, but we're also clearing out students who have transitioned to other districts. And so we're trying to work to clean that out. Um, 
By our next board meeting, we should be able to have a very clear report on class sizes. And while we do an official count on October 1st, and we do our first unofficial official count on Thursday as we really try to make projections and act to balance our class size and most effectively take care of our enrollment situations. You had mentioned, and just on piggybacking on John's point, were there, were, were there any spots that were hotter than others in terms of, you know? Um, so one of the things that we do that is an, an interesting practice is we post our class lists. Um, so a class list is a list of students we anticipate being present in a class section. Um, so for example, at one of our schools, uh, 27 was the class list numbers of our three kindergarten classes. And to date, we have two classes of 24 in those kindergartens and one class of 26. Um, and so at that one school, which is our DLS, we talked within the class of 26 and word is going to go home giving the option of changing from the 26 student class to the 24 student class, which would bring all three classes at 25 or below, which is what we were aiming for. Um, what we typically find in the situation is no one in the 26 student class would prefer to transition. Um, and so people would actually choose the slightly higher class size rather than reducing and, and having a transition. Now on the other side of the coin, we have identified at least one area, the fourth grade at STEM, which we are monitoring very closely. Um, we have class sizes um, averaging about slightly above 29. Um, and so as the board has given three FTE to review and assign as we try to work with our overall class sizes, that's one of the areas where we would be most likely to act first in the situation, which would probably happen um, early next week, depending on, on the actual student counts as we keep, keep moving forward. And is, is it, so with 20, 29-ish, is, is that five, six, or seven classes? Um, I, I forget how. That is, STEM is five, five sessions. Okay. By adding one, we reduce it to almost exactly our target of 25. Thanks. Other questions? No. Go ahead and move on to the uh, CIS PSEO cost update. Right. So the board had asked for information in regard to our college enrollments and our dual enrollment classes. Um, and so I wanted to share some brief information about how our advanced coursework is going. There are three mechanisms by which we do college credits in Richfield Public Schools. We have PSEO, or post-secondary enrollment option. We have college in the schools, and we have AP classes. Um, and we are proud to announce that within PSEO, we had 284 and a half credits earned. Um, and these are college credit students earned well enrolled in high school. Um, we have a very thriving college in the schools program where 1,145 credits were earned. Um, and then AP classes, there are classes and there are also exams. Um, and depending on where we are applying our examinations, an AP score of four or above or three or above is considered a college credit based um, achievement. We had 28 students scoring four or above with an additional 43 scoring at three for a total of 71 credits within AP. Um, and so we are slightly above the 1400 number in terms of college credits, which actually considering the savings for our students, um, is approximately $673,000 worth of college tuition that Richfield Public School students saved last year by attending college classes while concurrently enrolled in Richfield Public Schools. Very nice. Questions regarding the uh, d data regarding uh, college credits earned at the high school. This is certainly an impressive sum, and uh, what would be the, what would be the interest in, in tracking this moving forward? Is that something that board members would like to have some longitudinal data on? Personally, I would think I would, so. Yeah, I would think that'd be I valuable. Think it, <clears throat> Um, it's one of those things that I think it's important the community understands yeah, that good, Richfield yeah. High School offers. Yeah. Um, I guess I'd be curious, um, and I, I can maybe have a conversation with the new high school principal, Ms. Daniels, as to what her experience has been with that in the past, um, how she feels about, um, and maybe you already know. Um, I did note, uh, being in the building uh, late last week, that there does appear to be a college in the school Spanish class again this year. So that's encouraging as well. 
Yes, there's actually some additional options within college and the schools being offered this year, including Spanish. There's also an African American history class, which is one of only three offered, despite 56 applications to the University of Minnesota. Richfield High School was selected to offer that course. Um, we anticipate this number growing. Um, in terms of working with the new principal, Ms. Daniels, you know, it's always a balance when you're a brand new principal or a brand new superintendent, which are those types of things, the practices that you change, and which are the things that you truly study. Um, one of the mechanisms Ms. Daniels is very familiar with in terms of increasing enrollment is having conversations with students and parents about who is willing and interested in participating in the classes, uh, making sure that we don't put forth some accidental adult barriers to students enrolling in our classes. Um, and so Ms. Daniels is going to be working with our high school staff to examine our application for these courses process and make sure that it is um, both rigorous but also allowing any student who is likely to succeed through their effort and their desire to participate be given opportunities to be on that honors and college earning track. She has great success in expanding those offerings and expanding the credit service. Do we have any kind of a review process um, to assess the relative success of students in AP classes? Um, it is intriguing to note the different success rates um, of, of students who take the particular AP classes. Um, so it'd be also interesting just kind of know how we manage. And um, you know, it's one thing to offer an AP class, but if 10% of the students end up with AP credits, you start to wonder whether or not there's uh, value there. Yes, I can point to conversation where Ms. Daniels definitely examined our data in terms of course pass rate or exam pass rate within AP and certainly wants to dig into that further. Um, one thing that we did initially immediately note is, is that our total numbers of students enrolled and the total number of exams is nearly equal. Mm -hmm. um, and in many areas, what happens within AP classes is, is that students participate in AP classes with or without the idea of taking the exam. And so in many districts, um, students who are projected to score a 3, 4, or 5 will take the exam, and many students who might not um, will not take the exam. And so it's very atypical to see an AP biology class with 24, or 20 student, 24 out of 24 students all taking the exam. Um, or 29 out of 29 in our language and comp all taking the exam. So I'm proud of the participation rate, but it certainly points out that we definitely need to examine that practice further. Well, and those aren't even the courses with the greatest, uh, shall we say, concern with respect to passing. So. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, uh, Todd, for, for clarity, um, so you are, you're asking to you're asking to have some examination of success in AP courses. Um, now, are we defining success based on the score on the AP exam, or would you be defining success based on um, credit earned by whatever matriculating institution happens to be? Well, you, the distinction here um, is that PSEO is students who are taking courses off-site. Um, CIS classes are students who are taking courses at the high school that are actual college courses. And so those students will get college credit if they get an A, B, C, or D in the class. And um, I can attest as a, a student who took one CIS class as a senior at Richfield and didn't take it seriously that that class course grade will follow you for the rest of your college career. Um, the third one is the AP classes. And the AP class, you take the course, you then decide whether or not to sit for the exam. The course, you get a grade, and that's your high school grade. Um, if you sit for the AP exam and you get a three, four, or five on a scale of one to five, um, then most institutions will give you college credit, although some colleges and universities will only give credit for a four or a five on that AP exam. And so to me, um, the college and the schools classes, um, I, you know, I think you're gonna determine success on um, how well students are, are uh, succeeding in that class. Um, the AP classes, we have a very real examination um, that assesses how well the students did over the course of the year. And to me, that's the one that you may want to look at and say, if we're going to offer kids an AP class in which 10 to 15% of the kids are, are successful based on a 3, 4, or 5 um, score on the exam, then are you really offering an AP class? Are you, are you preparing them for that test? What, what's really the true objective? Um, 
and does it make sense to say it's an AP class if there's little to no chance of people passing it based on history? Now, this is one year. I don't know whether or not this is a trend. I don't know whether or not this is something that's an ongoing concern. Um, but if it's going to be, I mean, to me, the idea of an AP class is that you are preparing those students to pass the AP exam. Um, otherwise, if it's just a regular, I mean, if it's just going to be a class that doesn't have that intent, then just offer a regular class. So, so it sounds like it sounds like what you're asking for is that um, we would like. We, I mean, perhaps a breakdown of this information that would be valuable would be for us to see the percentage of students who took the exam who scored three or better. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess from my perspective, and I, we do have a little bit of that info here, right. um, from my perspective I'm just more curious about the assessment process um, and maybe getting some feedback from the principal as to um, what the priorities are, um, what kind of, you know, is there going to be thought around how do we, how do we attack this to do differently? Um, are, we going to, are we going to measure our success in these classes on whether or not kids pass the exam? Um, that's the kind of thing that I'm curious about is the thought process at the administrative level of the high school as to uh, how we feel about these AP classes and you know what the, what the administrative assessment is as to their success and whether or not um, they were successful and if they were not and we intend for them to be uh, kind of what the thought is about how we're going to improve that process. I, I, would, I would agree with that. That was, that was my take when looking at the results that were posted. So I will follow up with a conversation with Principal Daniels and we will review our college earning credits yep. and follow back up with the board for another conversation. So, perfect. And then I guess we can look forward to uh, getting data for the, uh, do my math here, 15 16 school year uh, up, coming up in September of. 2017 uh, or September 2016 next year we'll get data for the 15-16 school year and then we can have some longitudinal comparison and uh, be able to track kind of how we're performing overall. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we can move on to the next item regarding the MSBA legislative resolutions. So we are now into the place where I am repeating things in my second year as superintendent. So at the end of this month, um, MSBA, the Minnesota School Board Association, will be helping to develop their legislative platform. Um, and this would be the time where if our board wanted to have a conversation around any legislative items we wanted to put forward, um, we could certainly do that. Um, we could also go along with the typical slate of legislative items that MSBA puts forward. Um, a couple examples. Um, on last year's platform included uh, prioritizing an additional $300 per student on the general ed formula, um, ensuring that students are college and career ready and closing the achievement gap, uh, providing school boards flexibility to recruit and train and hire um, effective educators, uh, providing equitable access to technology, um, supporting teacher evaluation and QCOM, um, providing equitable access to post-secondary, and several others. It seems to me that all of those um, could be assisted by the legislature, except could you read number two again? Um, provide school boards the flexibility to recruit and hire well-trained and qualified educators that best meet the unique needs of their students and schools. That wasn't it, it must have been the one before that. Um, additional $300 on the nope. general education okay. formula. No, nope. I apologize, there was one there that... Did. Ensuring students are college and career ready. How does the legislature assure that students are college and career ready? Um, reading the full work, it's a review of the world's best workforce goals and plans and having a supportive oversight of that work. Okay, thank you. So you're looking for um, thoughts and ideas prior to when? Um, so if we were to put something forward, we would put it forward at the next board meeting um, to send in by the 30th to MSBA. Um, our previous recommendations have included uh, maintaining the compensatory education formula, uh, closing the gap between special education costs and what the actual costs are. Um, we have looked at early childhood funding, um, and those have been our main goals. I think in the past we've also asked the legislature, maybe not last year, but we've asked them to um, 
to contemplate the varied uh, maintenance costs of older districts versus newer districts. Um, and maybe rather than having a flat formula, um, looking at uh, what districts might uh, logically have more maintenance costs than others. How did things end up? Um, I, my mind is getting a little fuzzy on the details. How did things end up with the proposals around um, uh, extending eligibility for ELL uh, funding to the full seven years? I think they added time, but I don't know if it went to all the way to seven years, is my recollection. It was five, was it not? It was five. I'm kind of wondering if they split the, the difference. Wall and say they yeah. went to six. I'm sure it's six. It's, it's I kind of think that that's what's in my mind. Seven, yeah. But I can certainly, I will double check word for word and bring it back to the board next next week. Yeah. I mean, considering, I mean, that was a, a uh, an item that was brought forward by Senator Torres Ray, um, and I think also an item that our district would have interest in continuing to support. So, to the extent that there's interest in continuing to push for the full seven years. That might be a specific point to look at. Outstanding. Um, well, we can, we can mull our legislative wish list, um, and then we can uh, perhaps come back at the next board meeting if any board members have come up with any it sounds ideas. like we'd want to have it on the agenda for the next meeting, Mr. Chair. So perhaps if we have something that we come up with, we should correspond with the superintendent prior to the meeting. So that he can put it on the board for or the agenda for review, if I might. He suggested we need to submit it by the thirtieth, which means we have one meeting between now and then. Outstanding recommendation. Thank you. Spoken like a true, experienced chairperson. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get these grades by accident. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Outstanding. Any further questions or thoughts on the MSBA legislative resolutions? We will move on then to uh, the commendation. So this was wonderful to hear about our human resource staff. So a new, new employee joined our district. Um, she was actually a retiree from another district. She described herself as having over 30 years in education, working in multiple districts, um, and had shared that she had not participated in a more effective orientation and onboarding program than our human resources department provided. She spoke specifically of the both informational and relational strength of our HR department and basically said that in, in her 30 plus years in education, she had not seen a more professional and effective human resource department. And I just want to share that commendation out with the public and also which are, with our HR team. Thank you for your ongoing work. And obviously it is noted by those with significant experience in education. She did indicate this is her seventh district, so she uh, certainly has some experience with being onboarded. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's cool. Very, very well done. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good comparison group there, so outstanding work. Thank you. Very good. Uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. I would look for any questions regarding the consent agenda or a motion. I move we accept as presented. I'll second. So motion by Ash Mead, second by Paulus, that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, the consent agenda passes. We will go ahead and then move on to our old business item. We have none. We have apparently been quite efficient at our most recent meetings. Item six is new business. Uh, Mr. Patternis uh, with a infrastructure project change order. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I am here again with a few more change orders with our project. We are getting very close to being done with all these little change orders. Hopefully within the next couple board meetings, we'll have all these little financial pieces wrapped up and um, kind of everything with the vendors and the contractors done as well. Um, we're getting very close on that with our, with our overall project. So the change orders that I'm bringing forward tonight, um, the first one that you will see is from Matrix Commu or Allstate Communications. And this is for some additional cabling and some relocations of cabling at Sheridan Hills, Centennial, the high school, and the bus garage. 
So as they finished each of these buildings, we actually did inspections with our consultants, Ellert and Associates, myself, and our IT team going into every classroom and every location, looking to see where all these data drops came in to make sure that they were all in appropriate places. And occasionally we noticed some additional cabling that may have needed to come in based on where an office space location was, where a desk location was, or an additional phone needed to be placed within these buildings. So most of what you're seeing here with Allstate in the next few change orders that, that may come in with them um, are related to these changes that we needed to make based on what we saw after the inspection. And so this change order number eight would be in the amount of $1,447.59, bringing that revised contract up to um, just a little under 900 and, or just a little over 995 or close to $996,000. The next change order is from Matrix Communication. This is who put in all the Wi-Fi, the data equipment, the telephone system that's coming in. Um, again, they're connecting all the different pieces together. So one of our main pieces of equipment that um, kind of screens good content and bad content and helps provide security within our network is our firewall. And so as we've developed a 10 gigabit connection between all our uh, closets and, and main data connections, we wanted to ensure that there was a 10 gigabit connection going to that firewall as well so that all places where the network could get slowed down was not in our system and we could um, turn it over to Ties and our internet service provider if there's some slow issues. So to get that, to relieve some of the bottlenecks, we had a 10 gigabyte connection going to our firewall that we had to get into place, as well as um, wireless access points and closures. So in the gymnasiums and spaces where objects may get thrown around, so cafeterias and stuff, where we had <coughs> access points put in, um, we made sure that they were enclosed inside of a box, so if a ball or an object were to be thrown at them, they would be protected. Um, and so there was a couple enclosures that were uh, missed off the original list at the middle school and then over at Central Education they have that gymnasium space over there that community ed might use, um, early childhood uses that space as well that we wanted to make sure we had enclosures on those wireless access points as well. This change order came to $570.58 to bring us to just over a total revised contract of $966,000. Looking at the overall project, um, these change orders again are coming out of the contingency. We had built in a $240,000 contingency within our project budget. Um, adding these two change orders in and thinking as well about um, the future small change orders that will most likely be coming through, we still have a balance of 65,000. So we are looking at coming in um, well under the intended project budget on this. Um, looking at the overall budget, we had budgeted 3.3 million. Um, originally when we came to the board, Michael and I proposed a budget of 3.8 million after the contracts came in. Um, we were able to come to a reduction of 3.3 and it looks like with when everything's said and done, we're gonna be um, pretty well um, under that budget as well. So things are moving very well and positive um, in a financial situation. So uh, thank you very much for the update. I did uh, catch a few, a few glances uh, thinking about things being thrown in the cafeteria. <laughs> We're hoping We're that doesn't happen be too often. Cleared out and used as a gym space. Right. I was thinking of the multi-purpose cafeteria. The multi-purpose uses, for that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Just for clarity. Uh, any questions for Mr. Paternus? Hearing none, we would uh, look for a motion on this change order. I move that we approve the infrastructure change orders as presented. Second. So, a motion by Malik, I think. Was that you, Deb? I think so. All right. <laughs> so, we'll give Deb the second. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. The motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to Mr. Holgey presenting the teacher master agreement. And uh, can certainly uh, observe 
the and and thank both Mr. Holgey and the district negotiating team as well as Education Richfield and their negotiating team uh, for an efficient uh, process of coming to a settlement. Good evening. Thank you. Um, as both Steve Yanowski and Gary Schutte, who's president of Education Richfield, have indicated, there's strong force behind working together. And I think that's really the theme that we have moving forward in Richfield schools is working together. We're going to make a difference. Working together, we're going to impact the organization. And that, I think, is really a telling sign of the work that was done this summer um, by Education Richfield negotiators, as well as the district and the board, in working to expedite the process as quickly as possible, um, reaching a tentative agreement on August 25th. Um, having that ratified by Education Richfield on September 3rd and having us really move forward in the school year in a positive way um, that has a positive impact on Richfield teachers, a positive impact on the Richfield district, and most importantly, a positive impact on our students. Um, and so I'm going to highlight a little bit of what those changes were to the contract, um, but really kind of as Dr. Tensing indicated, um, express my appreciation for Education Richfield negotiators in this process. Um, and really seeing how we can move forward in a positive way and setting the tone for moving forward as a district as well. Um, just to highlight what those changes are, um, uh, changes to the salary schedule um, were represented by a $1,350 increase to each step the first year, a $1,250 uh, increase to each step in the second year with an additional $250 um, for those teachers who are working at the master's level and above um, in our career steps, years 12 and above. Um, what that represents to the district is approximately a 2% each year on the salary schedule improvement. Um, we had no change in our insurance contributions for family um, and assume a small increase in our premiums for single insurance, um, really because we've had positive impact in our self-funded program and are, have identified a way to mitigate future increases and kind of plan accordingly that way so that we are more planful, we're not at um, the discretion of an insurance company um, identifying what we get each year, but we've been able to plan accordingly and budget for that so that we can mitigate that as much as possible. Um, other increases to the contract um, represent a 2% each year on the salary schedule for co-curriculars um, and those positions that are in our extracurricular and activity section. Um, we also increased our hourly rate of pay, which is what we pay teachers for staff development, professional development, and our targeted services, our after school and summer school programs, um, from $29 um, in the 14-15 year to $30.50 um, this year and then $32 next year. Um, that's one of the areas that we've identified over the course of time is an area that we're planning to increase um, to bring up to the market of what some of our surrounding districts are paying in those areas. Um, most of the other areas really are changes to language. Um, that represent um, some ways that we can positively work together. Um, we increase the professional organization leave for Education Richfield from 18 to 28 days each year. Um, those are days that are available for them for union business. Um, made some changes to our leave of absence language and clarified some of our practices and aligned that with state statute. Um, we added a section for religious holidays where teachers who are required to work on a day that they are needing to celebrate or desiring to celebrate a religious holiday, there are some provisions for how they can access their personal leave in different ways. Um, made some changes in our staff development advisory committee, just aligning that with state statute. Um, we recognize Martin Luther King Jr. Day as an official holiday in the teacher contract. Previously, it was shared between Martin Luther King Jr. Day and President's Day. Neither day is the day that we have worked, but it um, formalizes that process and recognizing that as a holiday. Um, made some changes to our preparation time language, and I'll highlight that in a little bit as well. Um, we increased, we um, made a cohesive process for teachers who have a national certification in our support services, um, where they all are either eligible for um, recertification, the payment for the recertification that they have to pay for to have both a teaching license as well as their certification for social worker license, um, and those positions that the district requires them to have that license. We are also or in, a, in replacement of that paying a thousand dollar stipend for those positions who are required to hold that national certification. Um, we also added some language that helps us recruit and track some difficult to fill areas, um, providing a thousand dollar stipend for teachers who are bilingually fluent in a district identified language, um, looking at the Spanish population or the Spanish speaking population in Richfield and having that as an asset for teachers who have that fluency. Um, as well as teachers who are identified in teacher shortage areas or hard to fill areas. There's a $1,000 stipend um, that the district is able to provide those individuals as well. 
Um, when we look at meeting and preparation time, we really focused on how do we collaborate and how do we work together, and at the same time provide time for teachers to do the planning that they need to be most effective in the classroom. And so we're looking at some practices of how we schedule meetings after school, and then also looking at changing the schedule, especially for the elementary um, programming for the 16, 17 year, to provide more collaboration time for teachers who are working with the same group of kids to collaborate and discuss those students in a similar way um, and provide that resource and availability. Um, and then we've also agreed that there are a lot of things that maybe aren't reflected in the contract that we need to continue to dialogue about and discuss about. And so we've identified some things specifically that we're gonna continue to uh, discuss in the meet and confer process that include um, workload, special education workload, assignment of teachers to district committees or appointment of teachers to district committees, um, some need to have some dialogue about electronic privacy and what are some positive communication practices for teachers and staff to adhere to when they're using email communication, when they're using text messaging, when they're um, using their cell phones and electronic devices as they become more embedded into the organization. Um, and then looking at how we discuss schedule changes and then also opportunities for conflict resolution and working environment just to make sure we have a positive working environment for all staff and all students across the district. Uh, so with that, that kind of highlights the changes. I think all of you had a chance to um, review the entire document that um, has those changes highlighted as well as some of the additional documents that we created for um, memorandum of agreements as far as how we're working together. Um, and I would just, just ask for your approval on those this evening. Any questions for Mr. Holgey? I just have a few just information stuff. Um, so the, the, the bilingual um, stipend, it, so the languages that we're talking, I mean, that you have in mind right now would be Spanish. Are there other languages that, that we have, that we, that we envision targeting immediately? Yep. Spanish is primary. The second one that is our largest population is uh, Somali. Mm -hmm. So those would be the two areas that we'd be looking at, but Spanish is the most predominant one right now. And, and, and is that process the person, I mean, in our district, I imagine it's, it's hard to imagine they, they wouldn't be, it wouldn't be essential or, or useful in their, their job, even if they, for example, someone speaking Spanish not at RDLS is certainly useful for their language skills, so. We're looking at that district-wide okay. um, because we see teachers at the middle school, at the high school, at all of our elementary schools that are working with parents who are native Spanish speakers. Right. And so just that ability to communicate with families and with parents is one of the things that we want to recognize. Um, we provide a lot of resources to support translation services across the district already. Um, if a teacher can have that conversation with a parent directly instead of visa via mm -hmm. um, translator, um, that's one of the benefits that we're looking at is an opportunity there. Is uh, the next is the, the stipend for the, the hard to fill. Yep. Um, what currently are position? I mean, do we have a list of positions in mind already that would be yep. our subject areas that would be hard so to fill? So one of the things we're going to be looking at is working with Education Richfield on identifying specifically what those areas are going to be um, as far as formalizing that process. Um, the Department of Ed puts out a survey annually of hard to fill areas. Um, I guess I shouldn't say annually. They regularly um, conduct a survey across uh, Minnesota for what are the teacher shortage areas and things like that. And so those are one of the resources um, that we'll be taking a look at, um, as well as working with other universities and then just knowing what our experiences are. Is, is it possible that for us, someone with bilingual skills would be also hard to fill? So that would be the, the, a double dip? <laughs> we <just> I, <laughs> Uh, it, it, it isn't that working the immersion program is a shortage area, even though that's a difficult to fill area. So the, um, the bilingual piece, it really is exclusive of one or the other. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Other questions for Mr. Holgey? We can move on to entertaining a motion if anyone is prepared to make that motion. I would move approval. I'll second that. So motion by Nolenberger, second by Ashmead that we approve the master agreement as presented. Is there any discussion? The only thing I'll say is um, in 12 years of doing this, this was by far the most efficiently uh, handled negotiation. I think there's a great deal of respect on both sides right now and I'm encouraged at the direction that the district is going. So. So thank you. 
And certainly want to echo that sentiment um, to our gratitude to Education Richfield for partnering uh, so collaboratively with the district in this process. So we have a motion on the table. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. I will not be voting. Yeah, Ms. Etchen's recusal is noted. So chair votes aye, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item three, which is donations. We had one donation for this meeting. It was an anonymous donor. Um, it was a very interesting experience. Called up and asked if I was to donate $600 to the district, how would I do that? Um, and you replied, so, cash, check, or charge. <laughs> <laughs> I avoided asking for cash or a check made out to cash. It was actually made out to Richfield Public Schools. Um, Actually, Principal Wise was a Richfield citizen. Uh, Principal Wise and I actually went there together um, and thanked the donor personally, um, but the donor just wanted to share their support for Richfield Public Schools, did not want any acknowledgement of who they are, and just wanted to tell us to keep up the good work. That's very nice. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. That is, that is a very uplifting uh, and generous uh, gesture from this uh, individual. I uh, would look for a motion on the donation. I move we accept the donation with gratitude. Second. So motion by Etchen, second by Ashmi, that we accept the donation with gratitude. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. So we can move on to advanced planning. Item number one would be information and questions from the board. I will, I will open the floor. If there is nothing to share, we can go ahead and move on to our future meeting dates. Uh, the second meeting in September will be the 21st. That is a Monday. We will be meeting here in the district boardroom, and that meeting will be hosted by the Richfield STEM School. Uh, then our first meeting in October will be on Monday the 5th at 7 o'clock p.m. here in the district boardroom as well. Are there any suggested agenda items? Hearing none, we can look at a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. <laughs> so a motion by Paula, second by <laughs> Nolenberger, that we adjourn this meeting. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. We are adjourned.